overwhelmed by life's struggle. Yes, the hardship, the sickness. Everywhere you go, you meet people overwhelmed by life's struggle. Yes, the hardship, the sickness, the pain. Look to your left and right, and you can feel the heart's longing for an escape, searching for answers. Hello, Ghana. The GCK flight comes to the coastal capital city of Accra in Ghana. The land of freedom and rich diversity is set to experience God's freedom and diverse miracles. From around the world, we connect with international gospel evangelist, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumyi at the April edition of the Global Crusade, themed Glorious Visitation from Christ. Get set to encounter the wonder-working power of Jesus Christ as He visits us from April 20th through April 25th, 2023 at 1600 hours GMT daily and global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday. An exclusive conference for Christian ministers, church workers, and corporate professionals will be held on April 21st, 22nd, 24th, and 25th, where Jesus Christ anoints them with enabling grace and power for end time harvest. The young eagles are not left behind too at the Impact Academy for teenagers, campus students, and young adults on April 22nd. The GCK convener will propel them to the sky and fly upward to higher heights. Out of Independent Square, Accra, Ghana, the word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world an engaging worship led by Jared Anderson. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. I... It is your time for a life changing experience. don't last forever. There is no doubt that we are all tired of the sorrows, pains, and deadness pervading the land. I have good news for you. Christ has come to guarantee true change this April at the Deeper Life National Easter Retreat. It's your time to experience Christ's resurrection power. From Thursday 6 to Monday 10th, April 2023, join the nearest Deeper Life Retreat location. Around the globe, Christ's power will be unveiled by Pastor Dr. W. F. Kumui and other anointed men of God. Everyone is welcome. The retreat time is a time of waiting before the Lord. I want to plead with you. Be present in every session. The Lord will fill your cup to overflowing. Come and taste of Christ's resurrection power. It's real. Praise the Lord. Uh, let's rise up to pray. The topic is very major to the church at this time. So please, even though you are a bit tired now, you can rise up. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for the honor to be together this season, to examine our lives, to be groomed, to be taught, to be guided on how to remain afloat at a time like this, in this critical time, help us to share together now your word to the church, to your people, to your servants, to your leaders, to your glory, by your power. Speak to us now by your word. In Jesus' name, I pray. You may sit down. Thank you so much. The topic is clear on the, on the outline there. Profiting by the law of sowing and reaping. Profiting by the law of sowing and reaping. You can write it down. 
do you have it there on the on the program sheet the topic is universal cuts across all strata of society the educated the literates the masses the youth the campus the adult the women every aspect the village the urban so it's, it's, it's a broad topic that we want to examine briefly this morning or this evening by the grace of God. The architect of this law, of this norm, is God himself. Look at it in John 3, verse 16. John 3, from verse 16. For God so loved the world. How did he demonstrate that? For God so, that was so it's instructive, for God so loved the world that he gave, he sold, if you like. So that sowing brought a, a reaping. That's why we're here. That's why you can see us saved, the whole world, uh, everywhere, sees souls redeemed by that act of giving of God. So he is the initial foundational architect of this law of sowing and reaping if you like. So he sowed his son to reap the world, for God so loved the world, that he, he gave his only son, begotten son, that whosoever believe it. That's why we're, we're saved now. You know, that's it. So that, that's, that's the rule, that, that's the norm, that, that's the, 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 the core of profiting by the rule, by the norm of sowing and reaping. Look at it here. In, in, in Luke 16, I read from verse 25. Luke 16, I read from verse 25. Are you there? Turn your Bible, though you're a bit tired now, but follow through. It will benefit the church at this time by the grace of God. In Luke 16, verse 25. But Abraham said, Son, remember, remember, that thou in thy lifetime receivest thou good things, and likewise as well as evil things, if you like, but now is comforted and thou art tormented. So whatever you sow is what you reap. You sow spiritually, you sow carnally, you sow in sin, you sow in righteousness. Whatever you sow is, is goes across every norm by the grace of God. So that's why we're here to look at it, examine this topic critically to see how we can look at our lives afresh and then be afloat spiritually and physically. The principle of sowing and reaping is natural as nature itself. Everything sows. The tree sows. The, 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 the sea sows. The earth itself sows. Animal sows. Human sows. So it's, it's a it's a, it's a universal norm, principle, law. It's iron law, if you like. So the, the law of soil and reaping cuts across every strata of the society, even among the animals, among the trees, the sea, the river, everywhere we sow. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scriptural tenet, if you like. Actually, the practice of the law of soil and reaping is universal. It's, it's, a, it's a creative phenomenon. It's in creation, it's in every aspect of life. Sowing and reaping goes across everything. It's, it is said that abundant giving brings abundant living, whether, whether among the animals, whether among the human is, is, is there, whether in, whether in cash or in kind. Look at it in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Chapter 9. I read from verse 6. Cuts across every strata of the society. Second Corinthians 9, I read from verse 6. Turn your Bible with me. Second Corinthians 9, from verse 6. By this I say, which soweth sparingly, shall reap also sparingly. It's, it's natural. Whatever you sow, anyhow you sow it, same thing you will reap. Are you planting? And you are, and you are careless about planting? The same you will reap, you know, tiny cassava, tiny yam. Because you are sowing it, 
without being careful by the garden, just behind the, the, your, 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 your house, not taking time to plow, not taking time to manure the soil. Same you will reap. Are you sowing spiritually also? Sowing malice? Sowing hatred? Something you will reap. It's a natural thing. Even though you are a leader or a worker or whoever, the same thing you will reap. So the law cuts across every starter of the society. And he said, look at it here. But I say, he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly. And he which sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully. If you take time to sow, even naturally, you know, you are having a garden or you are a farmer or something, or a fisherman, you are, you, are, you, are, you are taking time to sow, the same thing you will reap. You know. So that's, that, that's the rule. And the, the, for the, for this, this course, I will not, it's too broad a topic. I will now concentrate on the human, not even human, not every as, as, as aspect. You have spiritual, you have social, you, you have financial, you have academic, you have all, all sphere. But I will now narrow it down to material, to cash or kind, humanly speaking. That's why some are very wretched in the church. Because they're misers, because they're greedy, because they're covetous, never giving. Even tight, they don't pay, offering, they don't give. And some, even when giving, they give below their, their, sta their, their status. So inspiringly by the environment. So that's the essence of this topic this, this evening. Be careful as we share together and listen. I will take three points to buttress the, the, my assertion and look at the scripture vis-a-vis uh, -vis the society. Point number one, transgressing sower and reaper. Transgressing a sinner. You know, not born again, but he is sowing. So that's point number one, transgressing sower and reaper. Point number two, transformed sower and reaper. This man is transformed. He's, 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 he's now a child of God. He's sowing also and they're re reaping. The last point, if we have time, tri triumphing sower and uh, reaper. Point number one now, transgressing. Person is a natural human being, not, 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 not born again, not a child of God, not a Christian, but he's also sowing. Look at it in the Bible. In Psalm 50, Psalm 50, no, no noise. This thing, write it down. I'm sure this message will change our status. Some are mediocre, some are paupers, some are almost beggars. Because not understanding the, 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 the principle, the, the law of sowing and reaping. So listen very carefully. In Psalm 50, from verse 17. Remember, God is the architect. He is the initial architect of this, this, this law, this rule of profiting through sowing and reaping. By giving his son for the whole world, that's why he now gets children all over the world, born again, saved, sanctified, committed to the truth and to the word of God. But then we're going to point by one now. This is, this is a transgressor. But it's sowing and reaping. The same, look at it. In Psalm 50, from verse 16. Are you there now? Psalm 50, from verse 16. But unto the wicked, God said, the wicked, the backslider, the hypocrite, the sickest sinner, though in church, among the workers, among the leaders, is a sinner. But nobody knows, but God knows that this person is a sinner. He's a, he's a wicked somebody. Beats the wife, borders everywhere, you know, steals, masturbates, malice, hatred. You don't see that, but God sees everything. It's a tra transgressor. It's a sinner. It's a wicked. Look at it. But unto the wicked, God said, not man, not deeper life, not denomination, not just any, any gathering. God said, what has thou to do to declare my status? 
or that thou shouldest stick my covenants in their mouths. You don't have rights to be among the elders of the Christians saying I'm a Christian when God knows the truth actually that this is a transgressor. He's a sinner. He's, he's depraved. Not, not either a bastider or not, not yet born again, but just a churchgoer. Verse 17. Seeing that that hated instruction and cast it my words behind thee. We hear the word on Monday Bible study. We hear the word on Thursday, on Sunday, GCK, and then, but then, not, not actually repenting. No salvation. They're sowing at that fact. They're still sowing sin, sowing iniquity, sowing poison. Sin is poisonous. You are, you are sowing sin, even among your children. You quarrel with them, quarrel with the, with the mom, quarrel with the parents, quarreling among them. You know, before the children, you are sowing also. You are sowing on those children. You are sowing in their lives. And so they grow in, with that. Even as they attend service, maybe Sunday or Monday or you know, Thursday, but then the, the court training is at home. These are parents, these are leaders, these are, these are, these are coordinators, they, they, they are in church, sometimes they preach also, study scripture, but then at home now, they see you are sowing in their lives hatred, sin, bad example. So you are sowing all the same, but then you are a transgressor. So this man is a sinner, he's in church, but he's a backslider. Is showing. So that, that's why we're careful about this topic. It's, it's a broad topic. Sowing and reaping. You profit thereby, good or bad. So look at it again. In Romans 2, I read from verse 21. Turn your Bible and, and follow through. In Romans 2, I read from verse 21. Are you there? Romans 2. From verse 21, thou therefore which teachest another, teachest not thou thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, does that steal? The sowing. In the church, do you steal? You take money from the offering bag or your district or your group, church meant for retreat, money meant for, for projects, GCK or the ICC or retreat like this. And you pay for. You're sowing. You're sowing death to yourself and you reap it. The fact that when, 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 when one is reaping it, what he has sowed, we, ah, why? This is a Christian. She was not. This is a leader. He was not. He was playing pranks. He, 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 was, he was an actor, actress in the church, a hypocrite. God knows everybody here. You are here now. God knows everybody. God knows me. God knows your secret life. God knows your heart, the malice, the envy, the anger, the unforgiving spirit. He knows everything. He said, you are preaching. Some of you are preachers. Preaching. But uh, they do contrary. They're sowing. And when God is dealing with them, we thought it's, it's a witch. They're dealing with them or wizards or, or Satan. Not Satan. They're reaping it's a law. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Secret sin, uh, stealing and um, quarreling and fighting, destroying the Bible, destroying the church, you will reap it. I mean, you must reap it. No matter how it delays, though hands join in hand, recover it, you, you, you will reap it. You will be punished. Look at it. Verse 22. Thou that said a man a man should not commit adultery, does not commit adultery. You're in church. You preach not commit adultery, not commit adultery, but you travel here, you travel there, you commit adultery in the hotel and so on. Nobody saw you, but God saw. No member of the church will see you, but God, I don't believe, has even saw. What are you preaching? What are you doing? You're you destroying yourself, you're destroying the church. Though you say you're a worker. That's, that, that's the topic, that's the, that's the message. It's, it's, it's a law, naturally, spiritually, 
physically, you say, Lord, you break it, you die. You break it and, and do something that, that, that nobody sees. But, but God sees everything, he's a rewarder. So we are preaching, don't do this, but we are doing that. You know, you are serving your wife, malice, for two days. I mean, what are you doing? You are sowing. You are sowing, and you will reap also. So that, that's point number one. In, in Isaiah chapter one, Isaiah chapter one, every day we are sowing. Every day you are sowing. You are sowing every day, and you, you shall reap it. You will reap. In Isaiah chapter one, from verse 11. To what purpose is the motive of your sacrifice unto me? Some co cover it with um, running around, you know, carry this one in the retreat. You know, I, I gave yam, I gave this one, I gave cow, all rubbish. But God sees the core, the hearts, the secret, secret, depraved action. He sees everything. He, go and buy us this buy us something for the street now, take the money or something. And he went and bought a, a, and sold to the church. Is it good? You're yes, sowing. He went and, he bought it 10,000, but he, ordered, he bought it 5,000. And you're here now. Is it good? Even without the Bible, is it, is it good? So when, when you begin to reap it, by God disciplining you, judging you, for some years now, you didn't repent. Hear the message in GCK. Hear message in uh, Sunday worship, uh, last Sunday message, and so on. Uh, Bible study, uh, Thursday. You don't repent. Then you stretch God's patience. It becomes inelastic. And, and God judges by any means. Then you say that it's, it's, it's wizards killing you. No, you are killing yourself. Though you are popular. Blah, 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 bro, he's a brother, he's a good pastor, he's a good leader, he's a woman leader, he's, he's in campus, he's industrious, it's a lie. So be careful. That's a law of sowing and reaping. Whatever you sow, look at it in the same Isaiah chapter 1, and read verse 11 again. To what purpose is the motive of your sacrifices unto me? Say, Lord, I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the, and the fat of fed beets, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks, of, of lambs, of goats. I, I want righteousness. I want a, 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 a cleansed, clean life. Before sacrifice, before, before ministry, verse, verse 12, when you come to appear before me, who are required this at your hand to tread my courts, bring me no more venerable ablation. Stop all that and make your, make your ways right. Some are running around, I'm walking, sweating, you know, in the streets, in the, in the kitchen, a uh, all those chaff. You will reap. You will reap. I fear that when you are reaping, it affects the church also. You know, tell the pastor, our sister has a problem. Uh, brother says, no, no, no. She's reaping. He is reaping. He, she has sowed, which you don't know about it, but she is reaping now. And you know, involve the church to assist. What are you doing? Ananias and Sapphira did something, they sowed, but when we were reaping, there in, it was in the church. And nobody knew what they did, but the Lord knew and spoke through Peter. So he's reaping. Reaping cost across. Whether you're a leader, whether you're a worker, whether you are in campus, whether you are a youth worker, whether whether you are a children worker, whether you're a human leader, it costs across. So whatever you are sowing now, you will reap. It will not be now, it will not be immediate. When you sow maize, you can reap in a month or two months' time. When when you sow okra, you may reap in about three some some three months. But when you sow guava or, or mango tree or palm tree, it may take years to reap it, but they must reap all the same. All the same. Look at it again before I tidy up that. In Matthew 5, Matthew 5, transgressing sower and reaper. Look at it here. 
in Matthew 5 from verse 23. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother had ought against thee, don't offer it because it's a useless, useless offering, useless gift, useless money. Sometimes money is useless and rubbish. When, when the giver is a transgressor, he's a, he's a, he's a hypocrite, he's a sinner in church, he's a backslider, and yet he wouldn't confess everything and repent, and yet he's still walking. What are you doing? God knows you. God knows me. God knows everybody. He can't cover. It may cover now, but to be exposed in the marketplace. Look at it. Leave there thy gift before, not on the altar. I don't need that gift. You're, trans, you're a sinner. You're a transgressor. You're a backslider. You're bringing shame to, to, to the gospel. Shame to God. Shame in your, in, your, in your yard, in your company, in your office. Shame in your market. Shame in your business. This person is, is a member of this church. But see, fighting. See him. See him in court. See him trying to cheat. See him trying to maneuver. See him trying to, trying to agitate. See him try, trying to carry placard. See him trying to cause confusion in, in the market, in the office. It's a shame. So whatever you sow, look at it. Live there. Thy gift before the altar. And go first. First thing first. Don't, not, on, not on the altar. Before the altar. I don't need it now. You, you're not you're a transgressor. You're a sinner. You're a backslider. You're a drunk. You're a liar. You're a cheat. You're a gossip. You're a, you're a masturbator. Pornography is, 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 your, is your, now your business. You're a lesbian. Leave it by the altar. I don't need that gift. It, it, it's a poison gift. It's a soiled gift. It's, it's ill-packaged gift. I don't need it. Go and reconcile with your wife. Reconcile in the church, in your, in your district. Go and reconcile, even in your, in your, in your, in your, in your, in your office. Go and reconcile in the market. Those who have cheated, those who have, you have, you have abused, those who you, you, you have, you have, you have carried their property without paying back. Those who say, I'll buy you a car, took the money, I'll buy this one, you didn't buy. Till, till now, and you're here. You will reap it. That's why. That's the message. It's a law. It's a law. It goes across every norm, every strata of the society. But whatever you are, not in heaven. You really leave it here. Then ultimately in hell. In hell. See, see what you're passing through now. Think about it. Whatever you are reaping. Actually, before anyone can, can sow effectively and reap ac accordingly, such a one must be clean, must be redeemed, must be regenerated by the blood. Look at it. In, in Isaiah chapter 1, I read, before you can give, you can, you can sow normally, sow a clean seed, he must be redeemed. In Isaiah chapter 1, I read from verse 16. Isaiah chapter 1. I read verse 16. Open your Bible and, and, and read along. It's not a dogma. It's not deeper life dogma. It's, it's the word of God. In Isaiah 1 verse 16. Do you Nicomas listen, listen and, and hear the, the truth of, of sowing and reaping. Verse 16. Wash you be washed, that's the meaning. Be clean, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do the evil. Then you can sow. You can sow. And reap abundantly. And profit in the sowing here in this world. Ultimately, get it to heaven. So, look at, again, look at it in the Bible. In Jeremiah 4, I read from verse 14. No matter you are, you are being busy, busy in the church, busy running around, even the street now, stop that. Sit down and listen and make your ways right. 
in Jeremiah 4, verse 14, O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. Washed. Let's do the street. Wash us. Wash you. This is street. Don't be too busy. Let's sit down. Some run around. Some are not here now. Discussing the other. Being in the car. They don't care about the teaching. They're in the car eating. I pity you. Let this is street. The world is ending. Maybe we don't know. The world is ending. Look at the earthquake. Look at the flood. Look at the, the, the pestilence. Look at the famine. Look at the problems. Look at the, the, the death. Look at the wars. Look at the most of wars. It's in the Bible. The war is ending. Sit down and make your ways right and, and be clean. And get set for heaven. Again, in, in, for, for time, in the same Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 from verse 6. Isaiah 55, I read from verse 6. Follow me, follow through. It's a kind of a teaching session. Uh, it's evening message. Look at it here. Isaiah 15, verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. It will be too late. Some on that dying bed, they say, I'm sorry, but too late. Seek ye the Lord. Look at your Bible. Verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while it's near now. You have time now to make amends, to reconcile with God and man, if you like. Verse 7. Let the wicked forsake his way. You have malice. This person, you hate him or hate her, but you'll be smiling. Dirty smile. Smile with dagger in it. That smile is, is a dangerous smile that having dagger in it. It can kill. You're a, you're, a, you're a killer. You're a murderer. You hate your brother. You hate your sister. You can go and say, sorry, that thing you did, I, I was touched. I was hurt. I, I'm sorry. Reconcile. It's in the Bible. But then you are harboring that hatred. You are sowing. You are sowing. You reap. But this, mess, this evening, you can stay behind and Pray through and say, I'm sorry, and go to meet her, meet him. Sorry, for some years now, I've been, I hate you, but, but I was covering with smiles, with good morning, how are you, her children, but now I've seen my fault, I'm sorry. Do that today. Let the wicked forsake his way. Look at it in, in, in verse 7. And the unrighteous man, his thoughts, let him return, he's gone astray. The world have deceived you. All these prayer houses, they have deceived you. Come back. Return. Retrace your locus. Come back, your steps. Back to where you started. The raw the, the gospel, the true gospel, the word of God, of, of pure heart, clean hands, of righteousness. Look at it now. They turn unto the Lord. And he will have mercy upon you, upon me, upon anybody here, and to our God, for he will abundantly, sufficiently, holistically pardon. That's God. It's, it's a merciful God. Thank God you are alive. Suppose you have died. Thank God you have died. Maybe you are in America, you, you are in Russia, wherever you are. It is the same rule. It can be anywhere. It can be in the palace. It can be in the ghetto. Anywhere you are. The same rule guides, maybe you are, you, are, you, are, you are highly placed, that's all right, by God's grace. But then this, this law rules everywhere. In America, in Russia, everywhere, in, in Canada, in Australia, everywhere, in Asia, in Africa, in Nigeria, in rules, in the village, in, in the ghetto, in, in the urban, this law rules everywhere. So fear God. Are you in your room now hearing it? Kneel down and say, God, I'm, I'm, I'm the one. I need, I need help. And God is merciful. The Bible said he will abundantly, sufficiently pardon. Maybe you had a complete abortion. Maybe you are in cult. Maybe you are drunk. Maybe you have gone astray. Maybe you are in error now, heresy. Come back this evening because he may not see you tomorrow. 
That is point number one. And before I tidy that up, look at James chapter four. Transgressing sower. You are sinner, you are sowing. You are sowing and you will reap it. If you don't repent. In James 4, I read from verse 8. Turn your Bible and see scripture. This is actually a deeper life Bible church, not a dancing church. It's a Bible church, not a frivolous church, not a motivating talker church. Look at it. In, in James 4, I read from verse 8. James 4, verse what? Thank you, verse 8. Draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. Go far from him, he goes far from you. That's, that, that's how God does. He's begging, he's begging you, come, come, come. You don't want to come. You back him, he backs you. You don't care about him, he backs your business, backs your family, backs your career, backs your status, backs everything. But if you want to draw near, near, like that woman, a sinner, a harlot, that came to him and bowed, she was accepted. Christ accepts everyone, Nicodemus, whoever that comes. So please come near. Draw near unto, to God, he will draw near unto you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn this evening and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and, and your joy to heaviness. You are popular everywhere. He's a, he's a brother, he's our sister, he's a, he's a giver. No, no, you're burning. You're burning. You're burning. Point number two Transform sower. Point number two Transform sower. And then a reaper. So that's major now. Be transformed. It, it is life before service. It's life before ministry. Some, some want to, I want to be a pastor. I want to be, you know, an overseer. I, I want to be someone. No, no, you will die. Puppets is dangerous. Maybe you don't know. It's more dangerous than snake. This puppet. If God doesn't put you there, the world will destroy you. The world puts you on, on the pulpit, he preserves you. Seeing your life, humility. Seeing your life, transparency. Seeing your life, clean hands. Seeing your life, pure heart. Though you are, you are highly blessed, you are, you are a prof, if you like, but then you humble, Christ-like, even in talking, even in behavior. That's, that's that what I mean by transformed. And I mean, some of us, I'm a Christian. That, 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 that have been, have been, have been bastardized. Becomes a misnomer. What are you? I'm a Christian. Meanwhile, me, me, he's a liar. I'm a Christian. Meanwhile, me, me, he's a gossip. I'm a Christian. Meanwhile, he's a tear bearer. I'm a Christian. Meanwhile, he's, he's a thief in the church. I'm a Christian. Me, me, he's on for spirits. I'm a Christian. Beats the wife. Maybe the wife quarrel with the husband. I'm a Christian. What do I mean that now? I mean, you are transformed. Transformed. You have confessed your sins. You still have current experience of salvation. I don't mean many years, you know, all those rush, rush. I mean, you have current experience of salvation. Look up here. You have current. I, I do this every, each time I'm preaching. You, you, you hold the wall like this, the walls. Your career, everything, your money, all right. It's okay, but it's transient. It doesn't last. You hold like this. If you don't hold it like this, it, it will drown you. you. Become proud and arrogant and end up in her. Like Nebuchadnezzar. He said, I did this. I did this. It's my kingdom. I did this. Then God dealt with him, make him an animal. For, for seven years, one the bush. Eating grass. Then he knew that the Almighty is the Alpha and Omega. He became reasonable. Don't go this way. Sometimes experience is dangerous. Don't learn by experience. Learn by the world. Experience, it may, not, it may not come back alive through experience. But by the word now, by the principle we're hearing now, look at this in the Bible. 
2 Corinthians chapter 8. You learn by the word, not by experience. Look at the rich man in Luke 16. He, he learned by experience, he's in hell now. When you hear the word, you learn, you bow to the word. 2 Corinthians 8. 2 Corinthians 8. Read from verse 1. Transformed sower, transformed reaper, and is balanced. Look at it here. Chapter 8, from verse 1 of 2 Corinthians. Moreover, brethren, we do you to wit of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Very weighty verse. Though wretched, but they were liberal. Sometimes you say that I don't have, I can't give for the treat, I can't give for GCK, I can't give for DLCC, I can't. Are you sincere? You can't give. You are sowing. You are sowing poverty. You are sowing lack. That, by that comment, you are sowing. You are sowing wretchedness. You are sowing mediocrity. You are sowing to be a pauper until you die. Look at, look at. For to their power, I bear record. Yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. No wretched. Praying us, asking us, persuading us with much entreaty, though wretched, that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the mystery to the saints. Take. But they, they, they don't have much. Please take. I manage what I have. Take. Look at that, that woman in, uh, that God sent, uh, God sent a letter to her in Pesca 17. I don't have anything just to, to cook with uh, some sticks and die. He be said, Fear not, go, do as you have said, but give me first as God has said. Say, you poor. And she did that, and they never lacked in, 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 in the midst of pestilence and lack and famine. Now, brother, give, give. That's how to break poverty. See, look at it. But then, first of all, be transformed also. Look at verse 5. And this they did, not as we hoped, but, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and to us by the will of God. They, he, they gave themselves first, then they give their substance. That, that's the rule. Transformed, then your giving becomes meaningful. Transformed, your giving becomes reasonable. Transformed, your giving be becomes productive. That's, that's, the, that's it. If not, don't give. If, first of all, you are transformed. You are Christ-like. You are godly. You are transparent. You are heaven-conscious. You, 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 you are saved through and through, in and out. You are sanctified, if you like. And then, then you can give. It may, it may even be a, being a dollar. That's what we have. That one dollar given from a transformed heart is more than one million dollars. That one cobble, one nada, or maybe one rand, or maybe a ruby, or whatever it is, given from a transformed heart is, is more valuable to God than millions of that rand. Because it has transformed. That few you have with God in it, it's all right. You can go to places. God, God multiplies because you are reaping what you have sowed. Look at that woman in Luke 21. Passing in the house, empty house. I was going to church. What do I have? Check everywhere is empty. She now, so to say, look at under the bed, saw two mites and brought all. Widow's might and give all. That's widow's might. But you, nobody can give widow's might in, 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 today in the church. Nobody. At least clear the bank, clear the house, clear the pocket, 
Declare everything you have and give to God. That's what she, she did. That's what they call widow's mites. She gave all. Let me digress. Let me di digress. In Luke 21, she gave all. She gave all. Oh, look at it. In Luke 21, I read from verse 3. Verse, verse, 20, verse 1 for time. Look at it. And he looked up. Christ looked up and saw the rich men casting their, their gift to the treasury in offering back in our, in our church. You have one million and you're giving 2,000. Look at that, that, that deceit. But then look at it. And verse 2. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in hither two mites. Two mites. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you that this poor widow has cast in more than they all. Why? For all these have of their abundance cast in into the offerings of God, but she of her penury has cast in all the living she had. All. All. All she had. That's, 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 that's what I mean. Transformed hearts. What do I give God? Announcing about the SEC. Answering about this. Answering about this. What do I give? She, she went and checked around. Used, used lantern, so to say, and checked the, under the bed. And saw two mites. And gave God all. She never lacked. It's not here, but I'm telling you the nature of God. She never lacked. Like I saw in the first King 17, that woman never lacked. Because she gave from a transformed, sincere heart. She never lacked. So that's what I mean. See, see. In First Chronicles 20, turn your Bible if you will learn this evening. In First Chronicles. 29, rather, I read from verse 14, a transformed sower, sower, transformed sower. Look at it, First Chronicles 29, from verse 14, turn your Bible, you want to go and ease yourself, sit down and listen, listen, listen. Look at it now, in First Chronicles 29, verse 14, but who am I? What is my people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? For all things come of thee. Look at that. Are you rich? Come of God. Are you wealthy? Come of God. What do you have? You have things, degrees. Come of God. We came naked. Came as a toddler in a cradle, uh, in, 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 a, in a court, baby's court, naked. Empty, fools, helpless, hopeless. But what we have now, whatever we have now, uh, we're given by God. The, the, the education, the popularity, the wealth, the company, the farm, whatever, by the grace of God. Look at it. Read down. Verse 15. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners, as we are all our fathers. Our days on earth are also a shadow. There's none abiding, O Lord, our God. All this store that we have prepared to build thee a house for thy own name, come out of thy hand, and it's all thy own. When you know that fact, you, you will not say that I don't have to give to God's projects. When you know this fact, you pay your tithes. When you know this fact, in the church, you give offering as per your status. If you know this fact, you, you, you will give everything. You, you will give your life. You give your, you give, you give your, your, your treasure. You give your time. You give your talent to the owner. You came here as nothing. You came here as nobody. You are somebody now. Somebody made you somebody. And that's God. Give. Give to your fellow men who, who, who are... Who are, who, are, who, are, who are not as, as, as you are in having. 
can have pity on them. Go out and make you a storehouse, give out. Look at it here. In First John 3, look at your Bible. First John 3. When you are transformed, then you are giving becomes reasonable. You are sowing becomes reasonable. In First John 3, I read from verse 17. Turn your Bible and see the word of God. First, God, first John 3, verse 17. Are you there now? Waiting for you? Don't say I know it. You don't know it. Because you don't practice it. You have not known it yet. In First John 3, verse 17. But whoso had this was good. Hear me. Whosoever. No matter your status. Are you, in, are you in, uh, in London? Are you in Europe? Are you in America? Whoso have this was if, if this was good, it doesn't pass this world, it ends in this world. Your car ends here. Your ship ends here. Your business ends here. It is this was good. It don't go to heaven. This was good. Because you came empty, have these things, you leave it here as you die. You die naked. You go naked. Because you came naked, it, this was good. So you don't know it. Know it now. Look at it. But whoso had this was good, this was property. This was education. This was career. This was. When you die, you leave everything because he, he made them here. You die and go empty. That's how we came. That's the fact you must know now. See, whoso had this was good and said his brother has a need and shutted up his balls of mercy or compassion upon him, how dwelled the love of God in him? You're not born again. You can pay that school fees of 20000 We have it. God has blessed you of that orphan, but you, you, you shut up the, your balls of compassion on her, you, you have a problem. You have this was good. That's, that brother has a need of 5000 You have more, more, much more, more than that. That brother has, has no shirt. Just one shirt. You know it. Wash in the night and wear in the morning to serve. You know him. He has no shoe. And you have all these things. And you can't give out one or two. You have a problem. You rip. You rip. So be transformed. Be Christ like. Christ gave up everything. His life. He said, Father, the lie, a lie. I'm not sabotani. My God, my God, Father forsaken me. He said, let that will be done. He died for you and I. That's why we're living now as Christians. We're living now. But that he did. And he sowed his life. He sowed his comfort, divine comfort. He sowed everything. And now he's ripping us. Look at the crowd. Look at the salvation everywhere because of that sowing. So you used to be a Christ-like, be like him, transformed, then you also sow. You sow. Look at it in the Bible. Exodus 25. Exodus 25. Verse 1. Verse 2. Turn your Bible. Exodus 25. Verse 1. Verse 2. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, remember, they just came out of Egypt. Speak unto the children of Israel, not Egyptians. Speak to them. To the Christians. That's why we don't do launching to be church, in our church. That's why we don't go for unbelievers with the envelope. We're having a we are building a campground. I don't believe he's a chief. He has money. He's a big man. He's a millionaire. All rubbish. Don't need that. Speak to the children of Israel who have, who have left Egypt haggard, looking. No business. No, nothing. Tell them, Israelites. He's a nebler. See? Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering 
of every man that giveth it willingly. Even, among, even, even though the Israelites, there should be willingness to give it, to accept it. That's why we talk to church members. Don't care about the, the farmers. That's all right. They're farmer. Farmers are wealthy. The peasants, peasants are wealthy. I can give you testimony now. Some, pastor, some people tell me, uh, 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 Pastor, we are, I'm pastor in the village. Uh, no money there. Keep quiet. There's money there. You are the one hindering them to give, to prosper. See, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart. Ye shall take my offering from Israelites. That's why we take offering from Christians to be church, to execute GCK, to do to build the ICC, to do projects. That place you are, whatever you need is in that place. Because my God shall supply all your needs, all my needs. How? According to riches in glory, according to riches, not, not Nigeria riches, or America riches, or Asia riches, or the world riches. No, no, no. According to riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Know that fact. You will not grumble. Know that fact. You will not panic. You will not be anxious. Transformed sower and uh, reaper. Transform. Look at your Bible. Look at it again from verse 8 of the same chapter 25, verse 8. And let them make me an, a sanctuary, Israelites that left Egypt. No business. A sanctuary that I may dwell among them. That's how it was built. And they gave. You know, you know this you're a scholar of Bible. They gave until Moses restrained them from giving because they, have a, they had a willing heart to give. Transformed hearts to give. Do you think about that? Look at 35 of the same book. This is 35, verse 1, verse 4, verse 5. Look at your Bible. 35, verse 1. Verse 4, and Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which the Lord has commanded that you should do them. That's it. See, from verse 4, and Moses spake unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, Take ye from among you, not Egyptians, not bastard, not, not those who are do, doing rubbish business, dupes among you, an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord, gold, silver, brass, whatever you have. You have brass, that's all right. You have gold, that's all right. You have silver, that's all right. You have wood, that's all right. As far as far as he has, as the way he has blessed you. See my fingers, not equal. Some are high. That's how he kept you. Some middle, it's a pyramid. That's how he has blessed you. Some are at the base, the masses. That's it. So you give as he has blessed you. Can be brass, can be gold, can be silver, can be wood, can be iron, can be a rod, can be anything. Don't say I don't have. You have something you have. That's point number two now. But look at it again. It's usually and scripturally life before service. Scripturally. Life before giving. Sowing or, sowing, or, sowing or giving. Look at it. In Psalm 101. Naturally, it is life before sowing, before reaping, before service. Not the other way around. In Psalm 101, from verse 6, Psalm 101, verse 6. Follow, follow through. Don't, don't, be, don't sleep. Check your, somebody near you there. Is he sleeping? Wake her up. Wake him up. And listen, 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 listen. Psalm 101, verse 6. 
Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. Now see, colon. He that walketh in a perfect way shall serve me, shall sow, shall give. He that is transformed, walking, that is born again, walking in a perfect way, transparency in business, in market, in the office, even in the family, is clean and pure, shall now serve me, shall give, then will reap also. That's the, that's the principle. Don't go begging for money. Don't go begging unbelievers for money. You, you, are, you, are, you are in error. Don't go for launching envelope, go to the office. My boss is a big man. Who's your boss? A wretch. Not born again, a drunkard. Corrupts. Don't need that money. Throw it. If, you, if I see it, I throw it, I, I, I squeeze it, so in the, I shred it into dustbin. It can be dollars. I shed them. It can be pounds. I, I shed them. It, it can be rand. I, I, I shred them. It can be anything. It can be ruby. I, I, I shred them. It can be savers. I shred them into, into, into a trash can, rubbish money. Tell Israelites that they should bring offering to be sanctuary. Not, um, not unbelievers, not Egyptians, Israelites. Even among Israelites, those who are willing, don't force everybody. That's not what I do here. Don't force anybody. I say, this, this is the need you have. If you like, that's it. And some will deliberately give, and God prospers them. As you give, you prosper, you reap. I'll show you that one last point. As, as, as you give to God, he prospers you. You don't give to God with a miser. Look up here. Your hand is like this. You are greedy, you are a miser. Nothing, nothing comes in. That's a dead sea. No in, no out. Your accounts are closed. He can't get. Because it's a closed hand, that you get. But when you are like this, comes you give. It comes again, he gives. He a storehouse because you're the giver. The giver never lack. The giver is always on top. The giver. That's God himself. God is a giver. Never lacks. Never lacks. Look, look at the sea, ebbs and flows. Not stinking. But it dead sea stinks because it's stagnant. Look at the pond after rain. It's a pond. No in and out flow. Dries up. Some are dried up in the church. Because they never give. Don't dry up. Be a giver. Give what you have. Give what you have. Last point. Last point. Triumphing sower and reaper. Triumphing sower, and I can spend two hours on this, but I, I'll tidy up. In, 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 in Luke 6, Luke 6, I'll read from verse 38. Luke 6, verse 38. Don't say you know it, you don't know it. Don't know it, open it. Look at it. Give is a law. Break it, you suffer. Break it, you become wretched. Break it, you be bankrupt. Though you have everything now, but you be bankrupt. Give, it's given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over. Shall men, not from heaven, yes. Shall men, God will touch their heart to give you because they have obeyed God. Look at this. It's by Jesus Christ. Give. Then it shall be given unto you. Then you reap. You, you, you don't reap what you sow. You reap abundantly much more than what you sow. Look at the farmer. Just a, a, a grain of corn or maize. Then you see hundreds. That's the rule. Give. It shall be given unto you. Good measure. Press down. Running over. Press down, running over. Shall men give unto you. Look at it. For with the same measure that you meet with her, shall measure to you as you give sparingly. You also reap. Do you are born again, you are a Christian, but you are giving sparingly. 
you will live sparingly, you will struggle in life. You shall give in sparingly. That thing you can do it without any hassle. The way God has blessed you. But you are waiting for others to give also. Who don't have, who are trying to manage, but you have enough. You will struggle. You will struggle. Look at it. In in Acts 20. Look at your Bible. Look at Abraham. Look at look at Jacob. They were so wealthy because they gave. In 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 Acts, Acts 20. I read from verse 25. Acts 20. I read from verse 35. Look at your Bible. Verse 35. I have showed you all things how that so laboring you ought to support the weak and to remember the words of our Lord Jesus, how he said, how, what did he say? It is more blessed to give than to receive. And it's, it's a law. It's we are receiving, receiving, you don't give out, you will dry up. God giving you, giving you, you don't give out, you withdraw. You withdraw it. And when you withdraw it, you sell your car. When you withdraw it, you sell your house. When God withdraws it from you, you sell your farm. Because if you don't give, you will dry up. You will dry up. Look at it in your village. There's a house there in your village. It's, it's now dry. Nobody's there anymore. Don't care about God. Not transformed. Grass is growing on the roof. Your fathers were so wealthy, so so wealthy stinkingly. They don't care about God. They care about juju. They care about cultism. And the family is closed up now. Make sure you don't dry up. Look at it. In Proverbs 11, I'm tidying up as I wind up. I have some minutes to go. Look at it. Proverbs 11 from verse 24. If you don't give, you will suffer. Look at it. Proverbs 11 from verse 24. There is a scattered and yet increased. Scattering scattering, but you are increasing. Scatter, give out. Take, take blouse, take shirt, take money, take school fees, you are scattering, but you are increasing. It's what you give out that is your own. What you don't give out will, will dry up. Again, look at it. In Proverbs 13, verse 7, 13, be a giver from this meeting, from this, this retreat. Proverbs 13, verse verse. Verse 7. Then he just make it himself rich. Doesn't give anything. The matter he preach, Jesus will talk, we shall preach. He doesn't care. The money is there. But he is selfish. He is self centered. Doesn't care about anything about project in the church. Don't care about church building, DLCC, GCK, or doesn't care. Makes himself rich, yet had nothing. The reason that making himself poor, so to say, by giving out, is, is ironic. It's a paradox. And then he's very rich. I'm turning up now. All through life, we keep on giving and receiving all through life. What makes a living, it is said by what he begets. But, but what makes a life by what he gives. Somebody said that. The secret of abundance is, is hidden in, in giving. Why that of lack is a miser any less. Don't be a miser. Don't be a miser. The sure way to get is to give. If you don't plant or sow, you will not harvest. The harvesting, you are there. You can't harvest anything. No giving is insignificant when it is done selflessly, sincerely, scripturally, and sacrificially. The more you give, the more you get. Generous people are great people. In Romans 12, I don't have time anymore. If you don't have money, give a smile. Don't have money, give a word of encouragement. Don't have money, give a helping hand. Don't have money, give, give ears. Give your time, give prayer, or give attention. It is a talent that is used, that will multiply. Giving is, is, is the proof that you have overcome, you have conquered greed. Don't be greed. Don't be a miser. You fizzle out. Do pay tight. Do give offering. 
Do you care about what you are doing now in the church, the project going on? You want to, want to, want to as if you are begging, begging, talking, you know, talking, talking. You are in America there, you are in London, you are in Nigeria, you are in Africa, talking, talking until you give. Throw it away, it's rubbish. God is not a beggar. He can do without you. Look at it. You have something to give today. Think of what good thing you can do, you can give to God. Your fellow men today. Give it. That is the secret of joy. Nothing brings blessing than giving. The law of sowing and reaping worked yesterday, working today, and, and continue to work. Practice it and excel. So I will tie it up here and I ask you to rethink now. Rethink. Rethink. Don't have money? Give manners. Don't have money? Give manpower. Assist. Use your, uh, walk in the church. Walk in God's things. If you don't have money, give your mouth. Encourage others. Encourage. Money will come. You don't have money? Give your message. Preach the gospel. Be a soul winner. If you don't have money, give your mind. If you don't have money, give your ministry. So that's how we'll end it. Profiting by the law of sowing and reaping. Every day we're sowing. We're sowing. Are you sowing sin? You reap sin. You reap hell. Are you sowing righteousness? You're sowing light. You're sowing light. You go to heaven. We're sowing every day. Even here on the retreat, we're sowing. Everybody come back by four. When you come by six, you're sowing. Don't go out. Don't go out. We have Bible study. We have, have seminar after that. Don't go after that. We have break. And you left, you drove off. You have a car. You're sewing. You're sewing. Today is your day you want to retrace your locus. Retrace your steps. Back to the Bible. Back to God. Back to sewing. Sew your life. Sew your treasure. Sew your time. Sew your talents. Sew all. You will not lack. You will prosper. But here an eternity. Rise up. Let's pray. Pray and say, God. I've seen my faults. I've seen my faults. Don't wait until you go to hell to see your faults. Too late. I've seen my faults. I've seen why I'm wretched, why I'm poor, why I'm drying up now. Pray and say, God, restore God likeness. Restore Christ likeness. Christ gave all. God gave all. His son to us. That's what I saved now. Pray and say, God, make me a giver. I'll be a giver. I'll be a giver. I'm not lack. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father, look at this message that you have shared with us now. Look at them Hear, hearing us now in America, hearing us now in Europe, hearing us now in Asia, hearing us in Australia, everywhere, Africa, Nigeria, everywhere. Help us to come back to sow our talents, our life, our time. We shall lack anything. Even though the time is austere, time is, time is, is critical, crisis time, we shall never lack. And they put out in Goshen, no lack, no death, no struggling, no pestilence, no evil. Want to get there? In Jesus' name, I pray. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for listening.